Today's lesson, we are going to fabricate a flat 90 degree elbow. You can make any elbow with this method. It doesn't matter if it's vertical or flat. So we are going to make a 10 by 8 90 or because it's flat, our 10 is going to be on the side or 8 is going to be up and down. We are going to do a 6 inch throat. So we have 10 and 6 is 16 and a quarter, but we need to scratch a one inch line for our connection. And that's going to take, that's going to take an inch out of everything for you. So instead of going to 16, we are going to go to 15 and a quarter. Now, when I measure things on a ruler, I start at one and go to the next number up. So we're going to swing 15 and a quarter. Now, if you're cutting a piece of metal for this, you don't have to add the quarter for your throat because you're taking it out of material that was already there. So if you were to cut a blank for this, your blank would be 16 and a quarter. It wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to add the other quarter in there. So now we're going to swing our throat. And again, we're starting one inch in. And we have to subtract a quarter because we're adding our quarter inch this way now. So we're going to swing four and three quarters because we're in an inch. So normally it would be five and three quarters, but we don't swing from the exact quarter. So as you can see now, I have five and three quarters and I have 10 and a half. Now we can cut this out. You can either trace that out, but this is such an easy fitting. We can just swing another one. And again, we're swinging from the one inch line. And again, we'll have five and three quarters and 10 and a half. So what you want to be careful of, if you were doing square throats and you had some crazy measurement, like you were dropping two and four, you got to make sure that you have your insides right. So always face your patterns away from each other so that you know you have them correct. Now, if you were going to do this as a square throat, you would have to get a square and Let's say, let's say you wanted to do a six by six square throat. When you lay this out, you would have had, you would have to make this straight. You would have to make this straight and then you would swing your line from this point and it would be the same here. You would lay it out straight to wherever the throat size was and then you would swing here. Now I make a lot of square throats. I find it easier than making radius throats, but that's just me. So now we can notch these. Okay, so now we got to measure our heel and throat. This is your heel, this is your throat. And there's a number of ways you could do this. So we can do it times pi. And we'll do it an easier way. 
and I'll show you how to do the edge on this. But I'm just going to do this one so I have to skip the video room. I do have a machine that does it for me, but a lot of times I do it by hand. It's just what I'm used to doing in the roller. And we'll show you that in a minute. But the way that I do it is I just lay it over the roller. And we got 26. Just start at the end of the ruler and roll it, and I get 26. Good practice to write your measurement here so that you don't forget. Now our fitting is 10 by 8. So our wrapper needs to be 8 plus our Pittsburgh, which is 1 inch for each. So that gives us a 10 inch piece by 26. So that's our wrapper. So Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. So now we need our throat. Now there's a number of ways to do this. A lot of times I use a little quarter inch tape measure. I don't know where it is right now because you really can't roll this. So another way, you just take a piece of metal. nine and three quarters. So this machine is called an Easy Edger. I also have one on top of the Pittsburgh that does it automatically. I prefer this method, it's just what I'm used to. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta bend a quarter up or three sixteenths, and you just gotta follow your way through the roller. It takes a little technique, but it's not that hard. Once you get the knack for it. And a lot of times they'll warp a little bit. You can just run them back through and just let the tool do the work. Let the tool follow the line. And that's how we do that. So regardless of how good you are, you're never going to be beyond having to open up a Pittsburgh lock. I use a screwdriver. Um, Durodyne makes a tool that opens them up. It looks like, uh, looks like the back of a claw hammer. The seal heels usually a little easier. You could use a setting tool if you want. But it's all just how you manipulate them out. Like I've said in earlier videos, just tack everything together. So if you make a mistake, you don't have to go back and rip this whole thing apart. Now I did mention a setting tool before. So this is what they call a grooved seamer. You can use this or you can use a rivet set. This is used for making seam on round pipes or containers. We'll go over that in another video when we start doing the work on the copper still. I didn't show you how I roll this. So I roll them on the edge of the bench. I just take the piece and I roll it right over the edge of the bench. The smaller ones I usually do put in the roller. 
But again, you, you, most pieces you can roll over the edge of the bench. You don't need a roller. I do have an air tool that I use to hammer my Pittsburghs over, but it makes such a racket. So when you use the setting tool, you want to get yourself started. And you don't have to use this. You could use a rivet set. You could even use a nut driver. Mainly what the setting tool will do for you is it'll keep you from mangling the fitting with the hammer. And when you're hammering, you always want to work from the outside of the fitting. You don't want to work from here because you're going to end up damaging the fitting. You're you're better off working from the outside. Sometimes you use the side of the hammer just to get more done. But the air tool does a much nicer job. Now, if we wanted to cross break this, I should have showed you this. If you wanted to cross break this fitting, if it was big, if it was over 12 inches, you would want to find your apex. And if you were in the break, this would be the other way. And you would want to cross break it before you put your quarter inch on. You just simply kick it here to here and here to here. Now, a lot of times when I do exposed duct work, I'll do some crazy things. Sometimes I'll split the apex into quarters and just do something crazy and nice, but whatever floats your boat. So again, this is just a flat 90. If it was wider on the side, it would be called a vertical 90, but they're both made the same way. In the next lesson we'll do a reducing 90 hope you liked the video please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one